we'll be focusing today about a very very important topic of congenital hypothyroidism which is the most common form of neonatal endocrine disorder congenital hypothyroidism has the most profound impact it is definitely the most treatable and preventable form of mental retardation of 22 year old lady who actually presented to us with severe developmental delay and pathological short stature if you can see so compromised in that perspective the height was only 112 cm and had all the features of uh, hypothyroidism which could have been picked up right at birth and maybe later on but unfortunately presented so late which really highlights the importance of what we are talking today how congenital hypothyroidism can have one of the most important impact and that can have a huge uh, factors in that perspective so you all can go and have a look at our website learning.brosociety.in explore different courses which are available up there have a look at our modules and we regularly have three grand rounds related to the pg grand round post graduate uh, lectures and the endocrine grand round and our books and mobile applications are also available there say guidelines which was published in 2018 now coming to the history of neonatal uh, screening in india for congenital hypothyroidism it was first done at wadia hospital in the year 1982 they first went in for a tsh screening and then followed it over in 1984 with a t4 screening and this is what they found is that around one in every 2500 and a total comes to around 10 10000 kids per year who have congenital hypothyroidism and as sir said the most common preventable cause of mental retardation so that is why the recommendation came in for neonatal uh, screening for congenital hypothyroidism should be done in every newborn in india this was the first recommendation second coming into the timing of the sample for neonatal screening now as sir already mentioned previously just to recap the surge the tsh surge is happening at 30 minutes from there most patients will have a decrease in the surge that is decrease to less than 20 within 24 hours the rest the rest will decrease over 48 hours that is why the recommendation states that you have to take a day 3 postnatal sample for a neonatal screening now if you do it within 30 minutes to 48 hours what is the problem it is higher chances of false positivity because you are having a surge in this uh, in during this interval so what do you have to do then you can either take the sample between 0 to 30 minutes that is a cord blood sample or you can take it after 48 hours so in 0 to 30 minutes you can take a cord blood sample or after 48 hours you can take a blood sample directly so what are the recommendations which they suggest they tell us that we can take either a cord blood or a postnatal sample on day 3 to day 5 now the second recommendation is that you can use either a serum or a filter paper assay the choice is completely dependent on the setup you are performing the test in moving forward which is the test you will do for neonatal screening for congenital hypothyroidism again this has been covered by pratikda and uh, dr anurag uh, will you do a primary tsh or will you do a primary t4 the tsh is more practical more cost effective more sensitive and more specific, specific click, clicking all the ticking all the boxes for becoming a screening test for primary hypothyroidism now in if you do a primary t4 based screening approach you have only one additional benefit that is you detect patients with central hypothyroidism now how many patients of central hypothyroidism do you get actually the prevalence of central hypothyroidism vis a vis primary hypothyroidism is around 10 times lesser so a screening test is always done for a more common common abnormality so the tsh primary screening test does very well for screening of congenital hypothyroidism now what are the problems which a primary tsh sample will give us it is of a delayed rise in tsh which you can see in preterms sick neonates and you will miss central hypothyroidism now what are the problems which a primary t4 assay gives us is it, it, it is missing compensated forms of primary congenital hypothyroidism and as i already mentioned is that the sensitivity of this test is much lesser and the recall rates when you compare them four out of five will be normal so this is why primary tsh sample is recommended in the neonatal screening second is that uh, 
The other big, big issue to remember is that when you talk about central hypothyroidism, <clears throat> most central hypothyroidism are combined with other mm. Mm. So it's very unusual that you will just miss them. Mm. So if somebody takes a good clinical history of a micropenis, undescended hair, cleft lip, cleft pellet, hypoglycemia, you will pick it up. So that's why people, and even primary T4 will miss a lot of central mm -hmm. Because what is the T4 level in central hypothyroidism versus somebody who has primary hypothyroidism? Whose T4 is lower? In primary T4 lower? <clears throat> yes. So in central hypothyroidism, the T4 is not always very, very low. Because there is some TSH independent production also which happens. So this primary T4 strategy will also miss many central hypothyroidism. So it is a good for nothing. It is not even picking centra, central. It is not. It is missing primary. So it's not a good strategy to go for. The second recommendation is for a uniformity. You will report in serum units, as sir already mentioned, not in whole blood units. This is to maintain uniformity across the country. So if you have a whole blood unit reading, you will multiply it by 2.2. This is an important method to remember. So normally many reports are actually converted into the unit already by the time it is done. So now you do a screening test. What are the TSH cutoffs? The TSH cutoffs, please remember three TSH, uh, TSH cutoffs for ISPE guidelines. This is what I regularly forget. I'll try to uh, simplify it as far as possible. So remember 20, 40 and 80. So more than 20 at screening, this is the cutoff for recall. Now, this is the cutoff for recall after 48 hours. What, what do you do if you get more than 20 at day three of life? You call in the child for a second TSH screen at seven to 10 days. So why do you call the child for a second screen at seven to 10 days? Because 20 to 40 is of milder cases. You can wait here. Second again, you call him at seven to 10 days, even at the most of peripheries, if you send the sample at seventh day of life, the sample goes to the city again, come back, come, comes back, you will most likely get the reports within two weeks. So the two week window is maintained. So you can call these milder cases at seven to 10 days of life. And according to the next report, initiate treatment. Now, the second cutoff is of 40. The 40 cutoff, if you remember in the SP guideline also, it mentions for immediate recall. Now, what do you do after recall? You immediately send a confirmatory sample. A confirmatory serum sample is to be sent in this case. Now, a point which ISPE guideline mentions is that you can wait for the reports in a case with TSH more than 40, but less than 80. But if the screening sample is more than 80, you immediately recall, immediately send a confirmatory sample and immediately start treatment. So more than 80, just call back the patient, start treatment. More than 40, send a sample. You can wait for the reports. Less than 20, you can relax and wait up to 12 two weeks. basis of this between more than 40 and more than 80? Sir, I didn't find any references. It is just a cutoff, this which is... basically is... because some people may not come back again. So they okay. don't want to miss on more than 80. Okay. Definitely. But otherwise, more than 40 and more than 80 for me are same from a clinical perspective. Likelihood of permanent hypothyroidism is same. For more than 40 or more than 80. Now, what is the confirmatory sample? So when you send a confirmatory TSH sample, that is after 72 hours of life, send a TSH and a FT4 or T4. Now, if the reports come to be normal, that is a normal T4 and a TSH, no need to worry, nothing to be done. Now, what is a normal TSH? Less than two weeks, TSH less than 20. More than two weeks, TSH less than 10. So it's normal, nothing to be done. Now coming to the second scenario that we can face is that of a low T4. Now, if the T4 is less than eight or the FT4 is less than 1.1, irrespective of TSH, you are advised to start treatment. This is the most severe of the severest of the cases that you can find. Now, if the T4 is less than 10 or the FT4 is less than 1.17, with a TSH of more than 20, less than two weeks, or more than 10, more than two weeks, go and start treatment. Now, now the previous recommendation which I showed you is only for term infants, not for preterm infants. Now coming to the final situation, is that of a normal T4 and a high TSH? I have uh, misspelled, uh, it is not low, it is normal T4 in this case. Normal T4, high TSH, 
So what do you do here? You can wait. You can repeat the TSH after two weeks of life. So this, as Sir said, will be the mildest of the cases which can be transient. So again, repeat after two weeks of life. Now, what can you have here? When you repeat after two weeks, it can be either less than 10 or more than 10. So if it is less than 10, normal, nothing to be done, reassure and send back the patient home. If it is more than 10, again, this will depend on the level of rise. If it is between 10 to 20, again, repeat after three weeks of life. Above three weeks of life, more than 10, start treatment. We'll see to that after three years, whether the child requires permanent treatment or not. That reassess after three years. So coming to the special situations, again, sir has mentioned, the special situations here will refer only to preterms, IUGR, and sick neonates. So again, sir has said the TSH surge in normal children occur at 30 minutes. But according to the preterm and according to the gestational age, the preterm neonates may not develop a surge until four weeks of life. So the further the child is away from the term gestation, the later will the child develop a surge. So a neonate born at around 28 to 30 weeks may take around four weeks of life to develop a surge. But again, those born around 33, 34 weeks may equally develop a surge at two weeks. So in these cases, you, you do a regular routine screening. The recommendations are specific that do a routine screening at 48 to 72 hours of postnatal age. But in sick neonates, repeat the screening sample after seven days. And in high risk neonates, do a second screen at four weeks of age if the child is admitted to the hospital. And if the child is at an early discharge, do it at two weeks. <laughs>